it's cool to see, you know, Tiger, who was born in 1975, still, you know, having a shot. Um, the odds are relative to a lot of the younger guys aren't really in his favor. I think he's 40 to 1 um, on some of the bigger books. And the favorites are, you know, Bryson DeChambeau, uh, DJ, um, Brooks Kepka, um, Rory, all these guys that are, I think the favorite at eight to one is DJ Dustin Johnson. So, you know, but you never know how he'll play, um, on the Reddit that I moderate, I did a poll and of the 121 we have, yeah. So essentially 12% think that he'll defend 14% that he'll be top three, 15 percent top 10 which is you can see by the check mark where I've put I mean I think he'll be right around that um and then 30 percent um top 25 and then yeah the rest um think that he'll miss the cut which if you get look at his last six starts and they've been fairly well spread out uh, that entirely is possible um so you know he's just not playing the the most and then it's been difficult with COVID, although everyone goes through the same sort of thing, um, you know, he just does have young kids. Um, so there's a lot more of a complication there, but I mean, it's just so much history. I remember watching Tiger in 97, uh, on television and that was a huge moment for golf. I remember on SNL, they had, you know, skits about it, um, you know, for weeks and it was goofing on, you know, Tiger's dad being overly domineering. And that was a narrative that people discussed for some time. But, you know, you have such an impactful legend that has the longevity, which, you know, when you're winning in decade after decade after decade, you know, you're no, you're, uh, that's something special. And then, you know, when you're a Tiger Woods, it's very rare that all of the hype will actually underplay what the performance is for a player. But Tiger Woods is that special circumstance where, you know, Nike was giving him a bunch of money before he went pro. And, you know, he said it from the onset that he would have finished four years at Stanford. But I think Phil Knight and Nike were pressuring him in terms of the money that he could make. But I mean, I live in Southern California. He did a bunch of tournaments in Southern California. And he was playing the, I think, LA Open at Riviera from 95 on. Uh, no, no, it must have been before that because he was quite, I think he was 16. And, you know, at that time, he's already winning Junior Worlds and then on the cusp of winning some USA Amateurs. So, and then... Uh, you know, in Southern California, he won all those junior worlds at Torrey Pines in San Diego. So he was the, such a dominant force, not only in Southern California golf, but once he hit AJGA and then the NCAA, you know, blowing that out. Uh, it's just to have that type of confidence build and build and build. That's what I think a lot of the executives at Nike and other companies, you know, went for is that confidence it gets more confidence and success, but definitely last year, the magical moments at, oh man, the 2019 masters. And I mean, it's hard to believe that it was like 18 months ago and a lot's changed since then. And yeah, Tiger's had that jacket for a while, but the, to have him hug his son on 18, just like Earl Woods hugs Tiger in 97 it's like a full circle. My wife said like, that's a beautiful kind of synergy of that experience versus his experience now that, you know, his dad's gone. But I just really am rooting for him. I think everyone is. And, you know, he makes reference to, you know, he's had the comeback was not only through age and injury, but also pushing through that difficulty of, you know, the nine iron and the escalade and, uh, the kind of fall from grace relative to the squeaky clean image that, you know, Mark Steinberg and, um, all those people were pushing out there in terms of what he uh, embodied.
So, you know, that took, I mean, what well, was it over a decade ago, but the, that's still present in people's minds. And I think that more than anything else for people to feel like they could see through him and like really knew what he was up to. I think that unnerved him for several years. Uh, and then the swing coach changes, you know, from Butch to Hank Haney and then to, you know, Sean Foley. And then I think now he does a lot of his own work, but you know, they say like, what can you really teach Tiger? You know, he's Tiger, but I think he respects players. I know. I think other players have uh, like Jack and things have been offering him stuff on the, the range in years past, but I know he, he actually reached out to uh, Brad Faxon, who's widely considered to be the best putter of all time. Uh, well, certainly by stats, one of the top of all time. And there's, um, you know, when you, if you put all of it together, there's no peer, but bits and pieces, people have, you know, stronger elements of their game, but Tiger, you know, his strongest muscles between the ears and being able to keep himself calm, cool and collected and close out these majors is second to none. But this 97 experience was amazing. Masters rewind. I mean, so many people focus on Fuzzy Zeller as being the negative part of that week. But I think there was a lot of, you know, jealousy at the time. And so his kind of outburst spoke to a lot of that. And, you know, it, it, it was what it was. Both with the tournament and with it. I like the respect that other players give him. You know, when he wins it in such decisive fashion, I mean, there's, you can't really, that's all you can really do. You can only respect the accomplishment that he did. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, you can choose to say nothing, but for Jack and for Arnold and everyone that was watching to, you know, give it up in a big way to, what, 21-year-old Tiger? In the face of, yeah, widespread jealousy that, you know, he's, un he's an untested outside of amateur golf um, kind of unaccomplished commodity was understood. Wedge for his approach shot. Man, that's a sweet swing. See, he's been doing it for so many years prior to this that it's, you know, he was used to the spotlight. He was used to you know, being in front of reporters since he was like 16 on up, uh, or even before that when he's been on those junior world. So he's media savvy and knows what's up. But I think the difference is this time, perhaps not as sharp, Deep, but certainly on it. What's most familiar? What's most different? <laughs> it's great to be back. It's great to be back here um, to be able to play in, in the Masters again at Augusta National. It's just unlike any other property in the world. Um, what's different is the time of year. We've never done this. We never had a, a Masters in, in November. It is, you know, very different. The run-up to this event is very different. You know, normally we have the Florida swing and the normal run-up, but this is unlike any other year we've ever had in, um, in our lives. So He certainly is, like, much more approachable, and I think uh, Jordan Spieth and a few other people were saying that the experience of his kids, um, you know, his not playing super well and thinking that he'd never play again, and just a bunch of life experiences have, as they say, like softened him in a way. And one of the players, I think it was um, Xander, said he's like much more approachable, and early he's like very approachable at this point. So even understanding that when people approach him, that they're nervous and he can be disarming. And I like the new Tiger. I mean, he still won't sign autographs because he knows that autograph seekers will have kids do it and they'll, you know, they'll give money to the kids. But um, he will, um, you know, allow people to approach him and, and all that. I've been watching him play at um, 
here in the California area to tournaments since 2005. And I think it's coming up and they won't allow spectators. So the only thing that will have stopped it is a worldwide pandemic, the streak streak of what would have been 15 years. But um, I remember he would very intentionally walk with a very focused gait and then of course staring straight down. Um, so he can't lose himself and, you know, seeing a spectator looking at him or trying to motion to him or something. But, um, I think that his intensity is second to none. It's, uh, it's going to be unusual for all of us and we're all going to go through it together. You've prepared one way for a couple mm-hmm. of decades through the set of months you just referenced Correct. to get to this point. Flip that. What's the challenge? The challenge is that <laughs> I recognize this guy's voice. This is, um, yeah, Tom and Aldi. He also interviewed him along with Kelly Tillman. Uh, Tiger, after the incident in 2009, did two interviews, one with Kelly Tillman for Golf Channel, or the Golf Channel at the time, and one with uh, (laughs) this guy at ESPN. So uh, I wonder if any of those interview memories are swirling in his mind. Probably not. I was like 11 years ago. So. We've never had a run-up like this, and the the preparation is is very different. You know, we've... uh, we weren't look like we weren't look like we're going to have this event. So, the fact that we we're able to have this opportunity, be able to play in it, um, it's, it's great. But also, the the run up has been very different. Um, the course setup is different. You know, the having the Bermuda the way it is, um, and the ride not quite taken hold mm-hmm. yet. Um, a lot of shots are a little bit different around the greens. Uh, the, the greens are uh, not the 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 bumper run shots are not really there anymore. Um, a lot of uh, pop-ups and um, guys are, are taking divots. And you know, there are a lot of divots around, you know, around the greens, which we normally don't see. Um, uh, but that's the way it's going to be the entire week. Yeah, it's soft, maybe wet. The emotions still rise mm-hmm. up. Why? About last year. Well, Tom, it uh, just the, 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 it gives me chills just, you know, the, Every time I talk about it, just because of the fact that it was, it was so hard, the, the fight to come back and uh, to to go through the, the entire process that I had to go through to to come back to uh, to to win again and then to win another another major championship. You know, I fell on my face a, a couple of times. You know, I lost at Carnoustie when I had the lead. Um, I got you know, beat by Brooksy um, as in St. Louis, and and then all of a sudden here I am. You know that in, in the final round, which in, in, in the final group, would I, w- I wasn't going to be in, in that group unless we went to threesomes. You know, it's going to be in Tony and Frankie. Um, but the fact that we went in threesomes, the fact that we went off early, I was able to be in that final group. And uh, I, I've never won a major championship coming from behind. I was two back, and uh, it was able to sneak out a win. I love that he. Yeah, I mean, is very philosophical and kind of um, appreciates the moment. You know, back in the day, you know, in his 30s, more so I'd say in his 20s, it'd be like, well, I mean, every turn I play and I'm here to win. And, you know, he would win. I mean, I think his winning percentage for the longest time was like 30% or just shy of that. And <laughs> that's an insane winning percentage because the top players – like, don't get anywhere near, I think, 10%. Um, so when you have that, that type of killer mentality, the only thing you can kind of liken it to would be Faldo, I suppose, in the way that he would be, you know, nose to the grindstone, focusing, not talking to players during the match. Um, Tiger was that on steroids in a big way. Finally, got to ask, college game day comes to Augusta National. <laughs> That's <It's> awesome. <laughs> Re- reaction. I mean, what, what were they going to be? They're going to be on the par three course, right? Oh, um, that's going to be awesome. Um, reaction when you heard it and why you think it works. Well, I just think it's awesome. I mean, the the, the fact that you know they're going to have you know Herbie over there, um, you know Fowler and you know, all those guys, you know, and talk about you know college football. Okay, first of all, we are normally talk about March Madness, you know, right now, you know, at, at the Masters. Now we're talking about college football. And so it, 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 the fact that we're having sports is awesome, but to also, also have college game days is even, is even more awesome. Yeah, huh. That's, yeah, because the, the month before the Masters is uh, March Madness, college basketball. But 
I mean, you can see in that energy and that excitement that it's disarming in the way that he's excited about college sports. And he's a huge booster to Stanford and their sports programs. He's always there. And, you know, he lives, I mean, besides Alaska, Jupiter, Florida is like the exact opposite of the San, Fr- San Francisco Bay Area. And he'll make a bunch of football games and he'll go to Stanford. I know speaks to the golf team along with Noda, Noda Begay, the third. Um, quite often. Um, and, you know, I think I, I like people that, you know, support their alma mater and do alumni events and, and all that. But I mean, from as far as I can see, his swing's looking good. So, you know, 40 to one, that could be good stuff in terms of an odd. Um, I know DeChambeau and, you know, loves Tiger. And, uh, he's kind of prickly to the other players. Um, so, uh, I did hear that, yeah, they get along pretty darn well.